are subject to spoken word. The spoken word reveals that there is an inner power with each and every one of us. A tremendous power, perhaps never really realized or used yet, but it's available. Now, in religious science, we realize we have not only the opportunity, but the responsibility to speak a new word, because life is a progression. Some of us are speaking old words. We live with old thoughts, old ideas, old attitudes. A change never takes place. A new word needs to be spoken. Now, situations occur that seemingly overcome us at times. Members of the family are in trouble. We are in trouble. Difficulty is with our children, you name it. And we are unaware that all of these problems have answered. When we speak and put our trust in, A new word, I'm speaking of you and the power within you, the power over your environment that you can use when understood. There's an infinite intelligence, and my only request is that you deal with it intelligently. I trust to make it clear, as clear as possible, when I speak of a treatment. When I speak of a treatment, it's really prayer. But to us in the science of mind, it's more than prayer. Many prayers, we've spoken them all our lives. But a treatment is something definite. You go to a doctor for a treatment. You go to the dentist for a treatment. Now you come to something within yourself and give yourselves a treatment. It is a definite word spoken in which you can truly believe, and you're the only one to believe it, because you're the only one that's giving the treatment. You're in control. Now, when we become one with ourselves and recognize we're really not alone, there's something greater within us, a power within. And when we realize we can turn to this power, then we can give a treatment and bring into ourselves that which fulfills our needs, providing those needs are honorable, harmonious, and good. I think it's harmonious for you to be secure. I think it's harmonious for you to be loved. I think it's harmonious for you to find a joy in your labors, a joy in life. I think that's very honorable. We call that the law of harmony, which is the recognition of the presence of God or the spirit within us, which is unbounded and acts upon itself to create a new effect when a new word is spoken. Here I am just going along each day. Suddenly, I'm dissatisfied. I want something to happen. And so I ask, I want something to happen that will make me happy and make others happy too. Now that's a treatment. It's a prayer too. Do something greater than you are. And something happens. Now... We must recognize that every word we speak has the power to break down every self-made negation and cast it out. Isn't it interesting? We will go to the doctor and he'll give us a prescription. And usually it concerns a negative situation, doesn't it? Or you wouldn't go. Now, a treatment is writing a prescription yourself of something that's in harmony and good. And it's just as real, in fact, more real than that, perhaps, that you might get from the doctor. Now, I know sometimes it's very essential for us to have the doctor's prescription. That's very, very true. But in speaking of the body, you know, 85% of the time, our body is getting along by its own nature. It's at 15% where we get into trouble, science tells us. Now, I think it's very interesting that during that time, we rarely give thanks. We're young, we're vital, we're going. We rarely give thanks and write a prescription of happiness. A prescription, I am happy. But I'm saying to you that are in difficulty today, you can write a prescription to yourself 
that speaks a new word for yourself. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm secure, whatever it might be. And there is a response if you believe it. Now, sometimes I know we question ourselves. Now, you see, we still know very little about the common cold. With the exception, you have a cold. You know you're going to be irritable for a time, not feeling well, but you're going to recover. Now, it is said that when we are negative, we stop many of the functions of the chemicals of our body, and our body is made up of chemicals, as you know, and minerals and so forth. But we still are unaware of this power that I speak of, that what is this something that happens when, and you doctors in the audience, I know that you have experienced something where the diagnosis, here it was, but still something happened. Now, we believe that happens through a new word of faith. I desire to live. I desire to have joy in my life and happiness in my life. And when you said that and believed it now, you see, the spoken word is not a spoken word if it isn't believed in. Something happened, and new chemicals came forth into the body, came into action. This is the great study day of science. This tremendous miracle of a body of ours, what it can do. Not only for your health, but I'm talking about your mind that affects your attitude. Life responds to an attitude. Life responds to your emotional structure. And when your emotions are balanced, when the attitude is one of good cheer, life takes on just new meaning, doesn't it? With that, There's no question about this. Now, if there is this miracle within ourselves and there is the knower within or the God within, the Christ spirit within, whatever you want to call it, there is that power, but it demands a belief that has great depth to it. You speak a word from this depth, not a surface thing. When we speak our word believing that this change for the better is taking place, we must know there is nothing that can stop it. Nothing. By that I mean the word we speak. Nothing can stop that word. There is nothing that can hinder it. When we speak our word, say for health or happiness, joy, abundance, or activity in our life, except our belief regarding it. Ernest Holmes wrote these words regarding the word. When you speak a word and really believe it. Now, you speak a word, say, for employment. I know I'm employed, regardless of economic time. And you mean it. Something happens if you keep that word in action. That is why Ernest wrote these words. It cannot be reversed misplaced, mislaid, neutralized, or destroyed by any opposing force. For the word we speak believing does the thing it is supposed to do. Now, your word is supposed to go forth, and the Spirit leads the way to employment. Later. Your word for health, your word for joy, or unexpected good in your life. When you speak your word believing, now this demands depth. Now remember, when you speak your word, can it be reversed? You say, well, I'm not going to let it be reversed, but next day something else happens and you've reversed it. What about? You say, all right, my life is a harmony. I'm, I'm in the midst of a perfect love and I'm going to love everyone. And all of a sudden you're mad at someone or you're cursing someone. You misplaced your word, didn't you? You misplaced it. You said you believed it, but it, you didn't. Now, it was destroyed by yourself, not by anyone else. But when your word believed in, and you treat yourself to that new word, and you write a prescription, I, myself, am doing this. I believe in a power greater than I am that is right where I am. I know that I know, I believe that I believe, and I'm writing my own prescription 
for happiness or for joy or for divine right action in my life. Now, our word, you see, must be continuous and unremitting and will operate until all it's supposed to do is done. Your prescription is fulfilled. Doctor gives you a prescription, sometimes you have to wait for it. Same thing with your prescription. Sometimes, yes, it takes patience only to examine ourselves. Is our spoken word the truth? Is our spoken word something that nothing can disturb? Is it of such faith that nothing can contradict it? You say, well, that's asking quite a bit. No, it's not. If it's going to heal, if it's going to guide, bring happiness to you. You see, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Isaiah understood something of this too, and he said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. You see, we can speak a word, and that word has no depth. You say, well, how can that return? It returns to us by in action. In other words, you want action, but you really don't believe it, so you just go right along the way you've done for years. You know, I believe Jesus read these words of Isaiah. I believe he understood these words. But he had to prove these words, and he proved it. Just think of it. Here was a man wanted to be healed, and he had a useless withered hand, remember? Arm. Jesus said, stretch forth thy hand. Why? Jesus saw a perfect arm and hand. Now, we have a situation, physical situation, or a financial situation. We see the negation of it. Same as a withered arm. Such forth thy faith. Now, if everything really is of mind, and it is, everything that you can see was created of mind, including yourself, divine mind, if everything is mental, then, and if Jesus had seen an imperfect instead of a perfect one, no good would have resulted. According to the law of cause and effect, this was divine cause. You must see a more perfect life. Now, you can pray all you want to and speak the word, but if you're going to abuse your body, that doesn't make sense either, does it? You have a responsibility there. You can speak your word for security, but if you're not handling your finances according to common sense, then there's a problem. We have to become balanced and really bring common sense into our life especially as we're going to begin to speak the spoken word and believe it. Let's align ourselves with truth, the truth of ourselves. Now, healing, I want to say this because this is very important. Healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. Now, remember, healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. It is revealing an idea which is already perfect. There's a perfection within you right from the beginning. You were given, inborn within you, love and faith. Intelligence, too. You see, the spoken word is revealing an idea which is already perfect. The spirit within me is perfect. The spirit within you is perfect. Here I've seen somebody so lonely and down and out, another person, and life had no meaning for it. But suddenly, something happened. And automatically, they said, I've had enough of this. There must be better way. Now, just that spoken word had a feeling behind it. There must be a better way. Turning, and the knower said, there sure is. 
Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. Burden. I'll give you a rest. Huh? You come to that knower within yourself. Oh, how important it is. To come to that perfection. And so you know, this person that was low and down suddenly looks up for the first time sometimes in years. Because why? A connection was made. Same as you put the plug in a lamp. A connection was made with something greater within the self. No healing has taken place without this connection. See, the doctor can perform the surgery and it's necessary at times. And you can take that prescription for drugs. And that's necessary at times. But the body does the healing what is the body? The body is of God, and it's a spiritual power within that heals. Remember, belief is necessary to recovery. Belief is necessary to recovery. It is not necessary to visualize this spiritual body when we study visualization. But we should have a sense that the body is a spiritual idea. A spiritual idea. And that the flow and circulation of life through it is complete. All through your system. The inflow of good. The inflow of what's needed. In the mind furnishing whatever is needed. In the chemistry of the body. It's there. See. You visualize. The idea. Of a body. Now, sometimes it's difficult to do because you've had this situation, this operation, that operation, this and that. You visualize this body of mine as a good body. Goodness, I can walk. I can dance. This body of mine is precious. What is the idea you have that your body is not inhibited nor congested? It's a perfection within the body that brings an idea of perfection to you. More than seeing just the physical side. There is a perfect heart and a perfect idea of heart. A perfect head and a perfect idea of the head. Perfect lungs and a perfect idea of lungs. It's the idea. You say, yes, but I have this. There's still a perfect power that you can use and speak from, speak to, and for. But remember, it must be done by you. We must realize that back of any appearance is the great spiritual reality. And that's given me hope. And I've had people before me. They've been in many places. And you would say, why spend your time with that person? Why spend your time with that person? I was yesterday with the the group of AA, and there was one woman there. She has been in the field of sobriety now for, I guess, 25 years. She recalled that moment where she spoke a new word, a new word. You should see her today, how beautiful. Now, you've met people I know, and you'll say, goodness, I, I just can't stand that person. That person still has a perfection within them and the same power that you have, they have, except they don't know it. They don't know it, and that's where I have compassion. That's why I can forgive, because they're unaware of it, they don't know it. But you know it. You know there's a power. You slept with it last night. You awakened. Fresh. The power never leaves you. The great knower never leaves you. You see, we must realize that back of any appearance is the spiritual reality. And we do this through the process of obliterating false thought. Obliterating. Now, if there's a perfection within me, if something is perfect and I believe life is a perfection, 
We abuse life, abuse the body, we abuse love, we abuse faith. But that's our business, and you have the right to do this. But why? Why? Now, here comes a thought to you that has you just almost in a panic. There's no panic in the spirit within. There's no panic in the spirit within. And at that moment, you calm yourself, quiet yourself. And in just quieting yourself and recognizing there's a power within you that's going to attend you, you're obliterating that false thought. It was of such panic that you could have had a heart attack, but you didn't. You calmed yourself down. You can't afford it. Let your nerves get hold of you that way. You can't afford it. And you weren't created to afford it. Unhappiness, discord, disease may be a fact. We're not denying it. But we're saying it's not the truth that sets you free. It is an experience. But it's not the spiritual reality of overcoming it which is the greatest joy, then you're on your road. All of us perhaps might have five, six problems. All right, let's take care of them. When you've taken care of one, you're lifted a little higher. And next one, you're lifted a little higher, a little higher. By speaking your word, there's an answer to this. And I am becoming the answer. That's your prescription. And something is providing that answer to me, and I'm staying with it until it happens. Until it does what it's supposed to do. And that's to free me from this thought that needs to be obliterated. Therefore, we must transcend many of these experiences and appearances. Even though we admit they're a fact. But a fact can change, truth doesn't. Certainly, we're not so cold-blooded as to say to a person, don't be ridiculous, don't stay with that pain. Or to say there's no such thing as pain, there is pain. No, that is not our idea or our purpose. To say that this condition does not exist when it exists, we admit the fact. But it's quite different thing to admit its necessity. The necessity for the pain to continue. The necessity for impoverishment to continue. The necessity for overwhelming anxiety to continue. Certainly we admit there's unhappiness. But it would be unthinkable that one has to be unhappy. That's unthinkable. Well, stress, accordingly, is an experience. It's a fact. But I say again, it is not a truth. It is not an eternal verity. It was a fact in human experience for ages that people did not broadcast over the radio. But it was not a truth that they could not. It was not a divine reality because had they known how to manufacture a radio and talk over it, they could have broadcast in any age. So we must try to see back of every appearance perfection is. But just like the radio or the television, they startled us. I'm saying something's going to startle us for world peace. It has to come. All of these great Thinkers and scientists are all now speaking in spiritual terms. Not only in the field of medicine, the field of science. We're coming together. So we ask ourselves, what should we try to heal through treatment? What we call a spiritual mind treatment? If we were only dealing with the power of a thought, we should not expect to heal anything. And so people say, just hold the thought. Hold the thought for me. No. We are dealing with a universal principle. A universal principle, why should we set any limit to its power? Now, before a thought comes forth, it rises from consciousness, your feeling. Isn't it true when you're not feeling good? There rises irritable thoughts. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Those are thoughts. And they come from the way you feel. You feel that way. So it begins with a feeling process. A feeling that the divine presence within you. That joy is within you. Happiness, laughter. 
that all so much good is within you. Good waiting to be released. And everything increases after its kind, after it's released. Here it comes back, multiplied many times. Now, you don't have to believe this. It's been proven. And since the law of God is infinite, from the spiritual viewpoint, there is no personal problem cast upon you or a personal problem that must have its continuity in a negative way. There's a law of life that knows nothing about trouble. It only acts. But the law knows nothing about this trouble you're in. The law of life responds. For instance, you can have ulcers and you can eat all the chili and beans you want. And you can suffer and you can complain and complain. The law doesn't care. You have the right to eat all the chili and beans you want. But it's you. Shouldn't you care? Shouldn't you use common sense? See, the law only acts. And the law of your body doesn't like that. With an ulcer there, it's hurting that ulcer. And you know it. That's up to you. So you do things that hurt yourself. It's you in action. So what kind of an action do you want to get with? An action that's going to obliterate many of the false ideas and get in tune with something greater? Our word is the law unto the thing whereunto it is spoken. And has within itself the ability, the power, and the intelligence to execute itself through the great law of all life. It's done unto you as you believe. And the law being the spontaneous recognition of the living spirit, infinite, ever present, and ever active. But let it be manifest now in an active way for good. Let goodness attend us. You say, let God attend me. Let goodness attend you. Let goodness be spoken from your mouth to another. Goodness. You say too much of God without realizing. What do we mean by God? God is our life. God is the power within forever and ever and ever. You were created for this expression with all of the things necessary for joy and happiness. But we have brought in many confusing things, haven't we? Why? So we give ourselves a treatment. We write a new prescription for ourselves. I'm very special. I'm different than anyone else. I want to be special in the manner of goodness for a world that needs goodness, that needs love, that needs me. I am ready. Now, to the spirit, all things are possible. Throughout the centuries, we have learned that certainly much of our disorders is largely a state of mind. There are exceptions, of course. But we could hardly say that a state of mind is incurable. I don't believe. Could we? A state of mind. And I've worked with so many. Therefore, can we not accordingly change our minds to a better state instead of a worse one? In other words, just a step up to a better state of mind. Just a little step, a better state of mind today. You're going to smile a little bit. You're going to feel a step better. Now, you know you can speak your word for employment, for health, for activity, whatever it is. And if you really believe it, it will do what it's supposed to do according to the word spoken, the power of your word. I want you to really feel it, though. We give lip service, yes, to our prayers, even the Lord's Prayer. Though we have to have a deep feeling and a meaning. The power of your word is there. Oh, how grateful we are to be present here. I think we all feel we're ready. We feel that consciousness that we're ready a step at a time or perhaps a giant step to move in the direction we were created to move in. Let's feel it. Let it happen. For this opportunity we give thanks, and so it is. Amen.